Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a Physics 7c practice problem on the topic of quantum mechanics. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like, it really helps our channel. So the problem that we're going to be solving today is uh, the rotational energy levels of a diatomic molecule are closely approximated by the following equation. And then they give you the equation that's on screen, where L is a known negative integer, so um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ta, 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 and B, a material specific constant. A particular diatomic molecule is in a rotational state L that is not the ground state, which is larger. The wavelength of the photon absorbed when the atomic molecule transitions from L to L plus 1, or the wavelength of the photon emitted when the diatomic molecule transitions from L to L neg uh, minus 1 state. Be sure to explain your answer. Okay, so we'll read part B and part C when they come. So as you can see, I have everything over here. And basically, we need to compare uh, and absorb that starts at L and goes up to L plus 1 with an emission that goes from L to L minus one. Now from the lecture notes that um, Dina gave everybody, including me, we do have our equations for absorption and emission. So for absorption is E final is equal to E initial plus E photon absorbed. And for emission is E final is equal to E initial uh, minus E photon emitted. So basically what we have to do is apply our definitions to both of the equations and see which one has a greater energy. And then we'll use this equation over here, which is for the photon, and we'll compare their lambdas. So let's see, so for absorption uh, so I'm going to solve for E photon so this would be E final minus E initial so final is the L plus 1 state so I'm going to substitute L plus 1 here and L plus 1 here so B And then subtract the initial, which is just L. So I'm just going to write this. Oh, so this is L. So then I'm going to have to like do some work here. So B factorizes. And then I have to like defactorize this. So L times L, L squared. Um, two L's plus two minus L squared minus L. So this is equal to two L plus. Okay, I had a little defactorization mistake because if you look at it closely and I'm just gonna go ahead and do it as it is if I defactorize this I get plus L plus L plus L plus 2 minus this chunk which is L squared uh, minus L so we get 3L minus L plus 2 and this cancel out so the energy of the photon that is absorbed is equal to B times 2L plus 2. So now we have to go ahead and do it over here. So solving for the photon 
then I, I just have to flip this so emission uh, this goes to this side this goes to this side so this is initial minus final so initial is just l in this case so it's just this minus final is l minus one so i'm gonna substitute l minus one here and here minus one plus one is equal to zero so this is just um if i factorize and do the same so this is l squared plus l and then this is negative l squared and um this is negative negative it's just uh, plus l yes because this goes away as a zero so we have negative l yes okay um so the energy of the photon that's emitted I don't know if it's with two t's, I don't care, is b times 2l. So this is the comparison in energy. So they are going to have different energies. Now, uh, which one is greater? Well, b is a positive number and l is a positive number, which means that uh, this guy has more energy than this guy because it's the same energy plus 2b. And because 2 uh, is a positive number, b is a positive number, then this guy is greater than this guy. But now we have to remember this equation, which is that the photon is hc over lambda. Um, so because lambda is dividing if you flip this too, you'll see that, uh, you know, whomever has the greatest energy actually has the smallest lambda. Again, because we are dividing. So because this is true, the relationship between these two guys is the other way around. Again, just because if you look at this equation, which is the one that they give you, just the energy for the photon, you have hc over lambda. So whomever, um, if you switch this two so that the energy is dividing, then you'll see that whomever divides a greater number has the smallest lambda. So this is my final answer for part A. So now let's see what part B is. So part B says, in the particular case of oxygen, B is equal, let me just write that, 1.8 times 10 to the negative four electron volts. What is the wavelength of the photon associated with going from two to three uh, rotational transition in oxygen gas? Okay, so, we're going from two to three, so this is absorbed. So we just have to apply our definition. So I'm just gonna copy this absorption again. If final is equal to E initial plus E photon. Now uh, E photon is equal to final minus initial. And in this particular case, they told us that we went from two to three. So this final is three minus initial, which is equal to two. So all I have to do is substitute numbers. So for three, uh, I'm doing B, which is 1.8 times 10 to a negative four. So I'm putting three over here times three, three plus one, so that would be four. 
minus 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4 minus because this is negative and then this is 2 so 2 times 3 so if I put this on a calculator I'm gonna get let's see um, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4 times 12 minus 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4 times 6 so this would be 1 Point zero eight times ten to the negative one two three, and then these are electron volts because this quantity is in electron volts. So this will be final answer for part B. Again, it's just a direct application of my uh, definitions. I went from low to high, which means that this is the absorption case. So I just went ahead and used my absorption equation, solve for my photon, and uh, this is the... Oh, okay, no, wait, because they were asking me for lambda. Never mind, this is not the end of the problem. Um, so this is the energy of the photon, but they were asking me for lambda. So what I have to do is basically use this equation. So the energy of the photon, which is 1.08 times 10 to a negative 3, is equal to hc over lambda. So lambda is equal to hc, uh, which is this number that the quiz gave us on the bottom. If you would like to look at the actual PDF, the link is always on the description. So this number is, uh, let's see. 1, 2, 4, 8 divided by answer. And this number is 1.15 times 10 to the 6. Nanometers final answer. which is, if you have nanometers and it's times 10 to the 6, then I guess this is 1.15 times 10. No, times just 1 point millimeters. But anyways, both of them are final answers, just different magnitudes. Okay, so now this is my final answer. So now for part C they are saying as discussed in the l free out modes occurs when the thermal energy given as uh, one half kvt where kb is 8.62 times 10 to a negative 5 is a small is small relative to the size of the spacing between energy levels based on this do you expect the rotational modes of oxygen gas to be frozen out at room temperature explain okay so first of all uh, we need to calculate this quantity, the thermal energy, and then we have to compare it to our energy from our transition. And if, and if um, this number is very, very small in comparison, wait, which one has to be greater according to the instruction? No, the thermal energy has to be smaller in relationship to this. So let's just go ahead and see. What's up? So KB, um, thermal energy is equal to one half KVT. So thermal energy is one half, and then the constant 8.62 times 10 to the negative five times temperature, which is 300. So the thermal energy that we are comparing against is equal to one half 
8.62 times 10 to the negative 5 times 300. So this is 1.29 times 10 to a negative 2 electron volts versus the energy of like the first transitions. So take for example this transition. Now what they are saying is that when this number is much uh, more, uh, is smaller than this number, then the modes are frozen out. And they are asking you, hey, do you think that they're gonna be frozen out? And the answer is no. No modes are frozen out because regardless of whatever your definition of smaller is, this number is not smaller than this one. This number is an order of magnitude greater than this one. So you don't even have to like think about, hey, but like what even is smaller? That doesn't matter because this number is greater anyways. So because this number is greater anyways, uh, you can automatically assume that no modes are gonna be frozen out and all of the rotational modes are gonna be uh, active on this oxygen diatomic molecule. So anyways, this was our last uh, practice problem, at least at the moment for uh, quantum mechanics. If you guys found this content useful, please make sure to leave a like and I will see you guys on the next video.